Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we're going to be talking about the Triceratops, one of the most loved and well-known of all dinosaurs. The Triceratops lived during the late Cretaceous period of what is now North America and Canada. It was discovered in 1887 near Denver, Colorado. The specimen consisted of a pair of brown horns attached to a part of the skull. It was examined by Orthneal Charles Marsh. He believed it to belong to a particularly large bison, but after more complete fossils were found, he realised he was dealing with a dinosaur and named it Triceratops. Fossils of the Triceratops are extremely common, especially the skull, which is very robust and appears to fossilise well. But many of these skulls showed variation and led to many paleontologists claiming to have found new species. As many as 18 different species of Triceratops were named during the late 1800s and early 1900s. During the 1980s and 90s, a major study of Triceratops remains concludes that the fossils fell into two distinct species. The popular notion was that the variations between skull specimens were all down to individual variation, maturity of the animal, possible sexual dimorphism, as well as the distortion during preservation. The most well-known feature of the Triceratops is of course its skull, with its three horns and bony frill. The name Triceratops means three-horned face. But there has been much debate on the use and function of the horns and frill. Two main theories are for combat or display. It's often thought that Triceratops used its horns for protection against predators like Tyrannosaurus rex. One skull specimen shows healed Tyrannosaur tooth marks on its horn and cheekbones. The bitten horn is also broken, with signs of new growth showing that this Triceratops survived an encounter with a fearsome predator. It's probably also likely that the horns were used for intraspecies combat, for rival males fighting for dominance. Holes in some Triceratops frills have been interpreted as being caused by the points of another Triceratops horns. But the most likely use was for display and recognition. The horns and frills of different Ceratopsians were very different, allowing members of each species to differentiate each other and perhaps to prevent an individual from attempting to mate with the wrong species. Many frill fossils bear impressions of blood vessels that may have allowed Triceratops and other Ceratops and dinosaurs to flush blood into the soft tissue that covered their bony frills to produce vivid colour displays. The Triceratops is often depicted as living in large herds, although there is no direct evidence for this. Other Ceratops species have been found in large bone beds that number hundreds of individuals, which has been taken as a sign as living in herds, but most remains of Triceratops have been individuals. There has only been one documented bone bed dominated by Triceratops bones, a site in southeastern Montana, with the remains of three juveniles. Another, more recent find may indicate that Triceratops lived in small family groups. In 2012, a group of three Triceratops in relatively complete condition, each of varying sizes from a full-grown adult to a small juvenile, were found in Wyoming. It is believed that the animals were travelling as a family unit, but it remains unknown if the group consists of a mated pair and their offspring, or two females and a juvenile they were caring for. The remains also show signs of predation or scavenging from Tyrannosaurus, particularly on the larger specimen, with the bones of the front limbs showing breakage and puncture wounds from Tyrannosaurus teeth. One of the biggest controversies surrounding Triceratops is the triceratops torosaurus debate. In 2010, a news story broke which stated that the Triceratops was the same as another dinosaur called Torosaurus. The theory that was co-authored by the paleontologist Jack Horner is relatively simple to understand. Triceratops and Torosaurus are both known from many of the same fossil sites as one another, although there are some exceptions, and from the same time periods. Triceratops had a short, solid frill that is unusual for such a large Ceratopsian dinosaur, especially an adult. Torosaurus has a more standard frill, which is elongated and has holes to reduce the weight of the growth. The conclusion is therefore that the skulls named as Triceratops represent the juvenile form, while the Torosaurus skulls represent the mature adult form of the same horned dinosaur. This is a very controversial proposal and still fiercely debated, but it is grounded in a lot of research. With a large amount of Triceratops and Torosaurus remains being known, and presumably many more waiting to be dug from the ground, it may be only a matter of time before this theory is conclusively proven one way or the other. But even if Triceratops is concluded to be a juvenile form of Torosaurus, it won't cease to exist, as it was named in 1889, 
before the Torosaurus, which was named in 1891, and so the name Triceratops takes priority. Before we end today's talk, I must also mention another dinosaur. Here in Ark Survival Evolved, it states that this particular dinosaur appears to be a crossbreed between the Triceratops and the Styracosaurus. The Styracosaurus is known for its distinctive arrangement of horns that extend from the back of the neck frill and for its single large nasal horn. It was discovered in Alberta, Canada and named in 1913. It follows the discovery history very similar to the Triceratops, with many specimens being found and named as new species that have since been grouped together into one valid species, for the same reasons I described earlier for the Triceratops. The Styracosaurus was slightly smaller than the Triceratops at around 5.5 metres long and lived slightly earlier, although still in the Cretaceous period. Remains of the Styracosaurus have been found in large bone beds, indicating that it may have lived in herds. Well, that is all we have time for today, and I hope you found it interesting. Please don't forget to like the video, and please subscribe if you're new. I hope you'll join me next time for some more fascinating dinosaur talks. Goodbye.